your test tomorrow. Again, it's a long test. It's probably the longest one we're going to have all year, as far as material goes. Yes. Okay? So it's concept 38 through 46. There's a lot to discuss. And what I did on your packet is pretty much gave you at least one problem for each. So I'm going to go through these, and we're going to go through each of them. Last class and first period, I only got through about like the first five or six problems. It just takes a while to go through this stuff, okay? So the last few things I'm going to maybe not get to, but that's the more recent stuff. So that should be more, what? Uh, fresh. I think you fresh, should thank you. More fresh in your mind. I think you should get more recent stuff first. No, no. Um, I don't know. If I'm, if I'm, to be honest with you, looking at grades, it's the other way around. I know you had trouble on the last stuff, some people, but the actual grades for the class, the older stuff, the grades are a little bit lower. And I, I just want to reiterate that. We won't, maybe we won't go through all the examples or the answers, but I'll go through the setup at least. Is this study guide in order? Yes, it is. Okay, so the first one is from concept 38, and you can tell it is, and I'll show you in a minute why. We're going to simplify. So let's take a look at this problem. It says, and this is true, as a rocket travels in space, it gradually loses mass. Its mass increases because there's a fuel tank and it's burning fuel. So the fuel tank is getting lower, lower, and lower. So the mass of the rocket is a function of time. As time increases, it loses mass more and more. So if the mass of a rocket is defined by the function mass equals force over acceleration, which it is, where the force is given as this function, and the acceleration is given as this function. Determine the simplified version of m of t. Okay? What does this mean to you? Look at the problem. What does it mean? What can we do? Divide what? Yeah, put the force over the area, just like you see, or the, over the acceleration, just like you see it here. So start by writing the function, or just write a fraction line, and put the force function over the acceleration function. So write the whole force function along the top, Write the acceleration function along the bottom. Again, this is why I said this is concept 38, because 38 was just simplifying expressions. So let's write it. Come on. Now, for those people that are watching them, if anybody's hearing this, the packet for the packet for the first period class is a little bit different than yours is. The problems are a little bit different. I, I switched up and changed a few of them. So if you study with someone from first period, just know that they are different, so you're gonna have different answers. Is that clear? Again, they're different packets. Because I know first period is gonna probably some of the students want to watch this video. So if they're watching now, they should know that this problem, especially this problem, is different. The problem for first period was a little bit different. It was harder to factor. It was a little bit easier to factor here. Okay? If you want to look at that one, you can. You're welcome to. I'm just giving you a heads up so you have an idea that they're not the exact same thing. Ebony, what's my first step here? What can I take out? <coughs> Good. Why can I take out a T, Ebony? Yeah, it appears in everything. Look at the top. You see all the T's up top? God bless you. Whenever you see a variable in all of the terms, start by factoring it out. It's your GCF. So I see a T in all three of these terms of time. It's a factor of the T in all three of them. So let's put a T out front. And what's left? Well, I had T cubed, now it's T squared. I had T squared, now it's just T. And then I had negative 6 T, now it's just negative 6. So I start with my GCF. What about the bottom? What's the GCF? It's also T, isn't it? Take a look. There's T cubed here, and there's a T here. So let's take a T out here also. So far, so good. GCF. Again, your quiz today, many of you guys made the same mistake, and I'll just go over real quick. When you were factoring the numerator, you were trying to get that 28 there, it did, it's not going to work because you need to take out a GCF first. All the terms are even. You could have pulled out a 2. Okay? Remember, guys, GCF first. You have to have that all the time. Always GCF. Next, what, what do I do? Okay? So tell me what I got. Two and three. Negative two and positive three. Okay, negative two and positive three. Perfect, that works. Okay, because a lot of people mix up the three and the two. They switch the numbers around. They do the negative three and the positive two. Remember, this is a positive one here in the middle, really. Three and negative two gives me this positive one that's right here, really. Okay, that's the part that's tricky. There is a one there. 
3 times negative 2 gives me the negative 6. Denominator. Uh, so the top is done. Sorry, I'm just going to cross that out because I factored it. Very good. So that's what the denominator looks like. I'm not canceling. I'm just crossing out because I'm rewriting it. Again, that's not cancellation. There. So now I can cancel. Yeah, the t plus 3 cancels, doesn't it? Yeah. What else cancels, though? The t's out in front. This t here cancels with that t right there. So all I'm actually left with for this problem is the t minus 2 over t minus 3. Okay, again, take a look at what's left. Up top, we're left with just the t minus 2. And down below, all we're left with is t minus 3. So that's what your simplified form is. Why can't I cancel the t's again? Because they're add ends. They're add ends. T is subtracting 2 or adding a negative 2. These are add ends. You cannot cancel add ends. So this is your final answer. There's no other way to simplify. Bridge. On that purple mask, <laughs> like, it says, like, x does not equal negative 2. Like, Think of a domain restriction afterward. No, no. The reason they do that, the reason that they do that, I'm glad you're reading that, by the way. It actually is very helpful, that yeah. the purple math is really good. That's why I put those readings up. Um, the reason they do that is to remind you later on, because you really can't have a 3 here, right? Because 3 minus 3 would be 0. Mm -hmm. And that's where your vertical asymptotes come in when you graph. So it's just a reminder. You don't need to do that right now. But later on, when we go to graphing, it does come apply. So if you want to write it down, you can. OK? You can always do that. All right, number two. Number two. Oh, that was the answer. Yep. T minus, what was it? T minus 4 or T minus 2 T minus I. T minus 2 over T minus 3. Alright, this one now. Multiplying and dividing. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Good. We can break all of them down. This is what you're talking about? Yeah, we can break a lot of it down. So tell me, Mia. 5 and. Thank you. That's what that one is. The top, can I do anything with? No. Okay, the second one. Want to do the second one too? Four and three, very good. All right, somebody else for the top of the second fraction. What can I factor at the top of the second fraction? Amber, raise the hand there, guys. You're welcome. OK, very good. Now, the last part, it says divide, doesn't it? So what do we do? Good. Remember, the last part says divide. So you need to flip this around. So please flip this. Rewrite it in your mind, as, or on the paper, as x squared minus 9 over 2x. And change the division sign to multiplication. And we can factor that. What do you got, Marcus, up top? Because that's an example of what, Marcus? OK, difference of two squares. So again, what have we done so far? We factor everything. Whenever you multiply and divide, you factor. Then when you divide, remember to flip it first, and then we'll factor. OK, again, we flip the third fraction right here. We wrote it as this, and then we factored it. So what I'm really left with. And I'm gonna, you don't have to write it all again. I'm just going to write it so we can all clearly see what's going on. That's what I'm left with right now, really. And a lot of stuff cancels. So, Juan, tell me one thing that cancels here. Can I just put just tell me one thing that can't. <laughs> X plus 3? Here and where? Good. Marcus, what's your question? So you can cancel like everything because it's not an equal sign. Very good. Again, it's not an equation, guys. It's an expression. We're simplifying, so we can cancel. What else we got? What else? X minus 3s. What else? The plus 5s cancel. What else? The plus 4s cancel. What else? The x cancels. Look, guys, be careful. This x here cancels with this x right here. Okay? Think about it. 
think about it. 2x is really 2 times x, which makes x a factor. This is also a factor. Thus, they can cancel. So what are you left with up top? 2x minus 2. Oh, the answer is just 2. One, uh, no, x. One. One. Just one. Be careful. It's not just that's the common mistake there, one. Look, when you cancel, you're really left with a one everywhere. What's one times one times one times one times one? Oh no. It's just one. Down below, one times one times one times one times two is just two. Your answer is one half. Again. Remember, this same guys, one at a time. Whenever you cancel, you leave behind a one. You always leave behind a one. Amber, Ebony, and Marcus. Um, the add-in thing that you said for the other problem. It was x minus three over oh, x minus two over x minus three. So it doesn't apply to this one. Because why? What are these? These are multiplying each other. So they are multiples. Factors. <laughs> multiples are the other way around. Multiples are like three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eight, twenty. Ebony. <laughs> sure. Point five. Okay. Yep, absolutely. Marcus, you have a question about the test? Like, because I noticed, like, on some of the quizzes, it's like, would you have on the top or on the bottom with, like, x plus 2? Uh -huh. put a, a number before that x squared. Like, like, oh, like, if you had, like, a 2 in front of here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, but a absolutely. Um, so, Marcus, question is this, guys. If one of your things had been this, I don't know, let's say something like that. Everything's even, isn't it? Yeah. So factor out of two. Okay? That one won't factor further. If this was a negative, it would have. Sorry, make that a negative if you really want to keep going, but that's what you'd have to do there, yeah. And then when you get to the bottom, like you still have that two there, yeah, out front. So even if these, even once you factor these, that two still remains. Just like this two is still here, right? Same idea. Okay. All right. Let's look at number three. All right. The most common mistake here is this. Well, there's two common mistakes. Cancel at the bottom. People try to cancel stuff at the bottom. One. And you're not canceling stuff here. Second. Second, people treat it as a uh, as a multiplication problem. I think of it as multiplying by. What do we really have to do here, Enrique? Okay? Very good. Find what's missing. That's what you're doing in the denominator. So before you can do that, your denominators must be factored. Well, x minus 4 and x plus 3, those are done. What can this be factored into on the left? Two. X, x minus 4. Thank you. Again, notice there's an x in both of these, so factor the x out. Sorry. I'm going to leave a little space here because we're going to have to put what's missing. So, Now, what's the definition of subtraction? Adding the opposite. So I'm just going to make this a plus sign and make that a negative 5 now. Again, make this a plus sign here, make that a negative 5 there. And don't you have to make the bottom one too? If the bottom and the top both become negative, what happens to those negative signs? Can't, can't. So that wouldn't do anything, would it? Why? Think logically, right? If I made this negative and I made these negatives, then those negatives cancel. And this would be positive again, and that would be positive, which doesn't go back to the regular. Mm -hmm. Only the top change, okay? Why are you Because we're going to have to see what's missing. All right, so extend your lines, extend your lines, because we're going to be missing a lot of stuff here. In the, first, in the first term, I see in my denominator x, x minus 4. What is not there that is in another one? X plus, three. X plus three. Now, if it helps you, if it helps you, maybe you should put this in parentheses up here, the 7x. But you're gonna have to distribute the 7x, okay? Keep that in mind. The next one's a little tougher. What's missing in the middle term? Good. Two things. X and very good. Because look, don't you want them all to be the same? Now, what should I put around the x plus x minus 4? Okay, I really suggest that you do that. So. Well, then for, it's, uh, for negative 5 over, or yeah, that, are we going to do the x on the side? 
Okay, we're going over here. No, that's mine. Very good. Okay, now, be careful. Here's how you remember this, and this is where people get confused. When it's an equation, we can cancel all the bottoms. But do you see an equal sign anywhere? This is an expression. You can only simplify. So, in recap, what's one quarter for one quarter plus two quarters? One quarter plus two quarters. You got a quarter in one hand, you got two quarters in the other hand. So, if I said, what is one quarter plus two quarters, you would say three quarters, right? So, Owen, what's one fifth plus three fifths? Four fifths, right? Is Owen dropping the five? No, he didn't drop the denominator, right? So, what he just did in his head, I said, what's one fifth plus three fifths? And he said, oh, it's just four fifths. Did you get rid of the denominator? You did not get this arrow, by the way. So your, so your answer will consist of one thing one of my four fifths. Very good. The denominator of your answer must be just one of your denominators. Just like you added the quarters, right? Didn't you keep the quarter down there? So your denominator is simply going to be this. OK? That's your denominator. The numerator is what we now need to figure out. And that's the work we're going to do. Distribute, please. Distribute. I'm going to write all the answers above it, and then I'll write the answer down here. 7x and x plus 3. What does that become? 7x times x is x squared there with the 7. 7 by 3 is 21. So that's done. So I'm going to start with this fraction line here. It's definitely going to have this up top. Next one, because oh, the line is on the actual space. So would you add, like, two will be still a plus sign right there? After 7 and square plus 7. Next one. Now, here's my trick for you guys, and I really suggest you do this. It will make life a lot easier on you. Do the x times 4x first. What does that become? 4x. 4x squared, right? So replace this with 4x squared. Then distribute the 4x squared. Okay? Again. Think about x times 4x. Well, that's 4x squared. Then distribute. So you're going to get 4x cubed plus 12x squared. 12x squared. Distribute. Come on. Again, distributing this to both of these, 4x squared times x is cubed. 4x squared times 3 is 12x squared. OK, that's gone. We're done with that part. So would that be You put a plus after? All of these things are plus. This is plus, this is plus, so in the end, you're just going to combine all your like terms. What about here? Tell me what, I don't want to know the answers. What should you do? Good. Think of it as negative 5x first. Rewrite the x times negative 5 as negative 5x. Then distribute that. 5x cubed. Minus negative 20 or minus 20 squared. Now, oh, be oh, isn't it plus 20? Yeah, it's plus 20. That's exactly what I was going to say. Be careful here, guys. It's got to be plus 20 because you're doing negative 5 times x. That's negative 5 x oh, squared, not cube. I heard cube. That's yeah, right. Square too. Okay, and then when you distribute the negative to a negative, negative 5 and negative 4, multiplying those two numbers, you get positive 20. And then you have the x still. Now, look at all the terms up top. Ignore everything else. Look at what's up top here in black writing. 7x squared, 21x. 4x cubed, 12x squared. Negative 5x squared, 20x. What do you have to do up there? Good. Well done, Ebony. Combine like terms. 4x cubed is by itself. So there's going to be no like term there. So this part is done. How many x squared terms are there? Three. There's three of them, aren't there? So i got to start. Let's begin. 7x squared plus 12x squared is 19x squared. 19 minus 5 is 14. So I'm done with these. Finally, what's the last part? Which is, again, 
this 21x and this 20x are like terms becoming 41x. There's not much more you can do except for one last step. Does anybody see it? You can Ever? No. Okay, but factor what? The bottom. Top. Well, how do you factor it? Uh, by taking out of two. Well, the tables. Yeah. The table. Can you table you if you wanted to try and factor the top completely, you could try this in table. But as Ebony noticed, isn't there an X in everything? Yeah. There's no even. This is not even. You can't take out a two. Be careful. Oh, okay. So here, take an X out of everything up top. Did you not take an X out of everything? Yes, because it's not simplified. Let me show you right now. Hold on. Okay. Here, up top, you're going to get. I'm trying to just teach you guys for the SAT because I know it's such an important test for your college. Now, Marcus, answer your own question. Why was it important that I took out the X here? Marcus. Ebony, I'm out. Why did I take out the X on top? Very good. Notice, doesn't this cancel with this? See this X in the bottom we had in the beginning? Well, there's now an X up top, and they're factors, so I can cancel. And this is what I'm left with right here. You can try and factor this top here. Okay, you can try and factor this using AC method. I'm telling you now, though, that this one is not factorable. Okay? So if this AC method test, you have to try and see if it works. It might. Now, here's the reason I know this doesn't work. I'm just going to tell you right now. If I factor this, it's going to be like 2x plus something, 2x minus something. That's not going to cancel down here. And there's no 2x down here anywhere. It could factor into like 4x plus something, x minus something. But this 41 here times 4 gives me 164. Right? If I did AC method, it would be this times this to get AC. That's 164. Nothing adds up to 14 and multiplies to 164. Okay. Well, if it's a multiple choice and you could factor it and then it would cancel, you got to do that because then it wouldn't show up as a, ch as a choice. But here, you can't factor the top, so you'd leave it like that. Okay. Yeah, when you take an x out of one, out of here, this cube becomes squared, the squared becomes just one, and the x that was here is no longer there because you took an x out of it. Okay. Yes. Look at all your cubes, look at all your squares, combine. All right. Now for this problem here, what you're going to notice for this problem is that you don't have the same denominators everywhere. We do need the same denominators, though. So let's go ahead and look. What can I factor up top, please? Tell me. Um, Good. Notice, guys, your factors appear in more than one spot. When you factor the top, this factor is in x minus 4 and x plus 10. Isn't that what you see in the bottom? Use your context clues, guys. Use your context clues. The top factor is an x minus 4x plus 10. Now what? Good. The top is fine. What should I do with the bottom, Ebony? Good. Now, what should I put around my print? Thank you. I said it, you heard that, right? What should I put around my binomial is parentheses. Okay? Please do that. Now, what do you notice? So, what can I do to them, Marcus? Why? Because it's That's the tricky part. But you can't cancel this. Let's explain why. Which one? This is 41. 41 and 42 is when you can cancel, yes. Again, let's explain why. 
If you had one third divided by two thirds, this is a side note. If you had this problem like that, you could just cancel the threes and you're left with one half. And let's explain why. Again, I could just cancel the threes and you're left with one over two. Here's the reason. If you did this, it's really one third times, because this is really divide, division is multiplication by the reciprocal, it's really times three halves. That's what it really is. And what happens to my threes there? Okay? Again, the rule is because of this. That's where it comes from. We did it in class. This is not what's important right now. What's important is that you remember how to do it. So cancel these, cancel those. So what is your answer would be uh, like one, like three x, and then the bottom would be uh, two squared minus uh, three x, and then the bottom would be uh, five x minus twenty. Well done. Okay. Finally, simplify, combine like terms. Uh, two x squared plus three x. Oh shit. Oops, that's an x there, sorry. So, so two squared is five x minus one. Mr. Cobb. That's his name. So, okay, those two cancel. Then you have the. Where did that mumbo jumbo on the side come from? It's a side note. This is just showing you where it comes from. You don't need to write it down. For this problem, guys, why do I know not to factor the denominator now? Why does it not matter if I factor the denominator? Why? Besides the inevitable. Why? Because nothing, if you add them up, I mean, it's irrelevant to, right? That's what it is. Because all of them have it. Overall. Why does it not matter about this denominator? Why does it matter that I don't have to factor it? Why? Because you don't have an x Why? Because. Say, matter? Which is kind of like what you're saying, but I wanted more detail. Again, if I factor this bottom, it's going to be like x plus something, x minus something, right? You have that up top, you only have a 3x up top. So no matter what, even if you factor this, the 3x isn't going to cancel. It's not. Okay? So again, don't worry about factoring the bottom. Yeah. Guys, you guys have a question. Come on. Mia? What is the final answer? The blue one is just combining these two middle terms. That's all. Okay, the 20x and the 20 and the 5x combine like terms. <laughs> How come the 5x isn't squared? Five. Okay. Wait. Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Come on. If you need to write, take another 10 seconds to write it. Give me a number six and then number five. Oh, look at it over. All right. Let's quickly do this. Number five. <laughs> what do I got to do here? Good. Six. Start by factoring your denominators. We'll do number five first. The same thing we did on top. Right? Correct. Same thing we did before. So, because of the equals, you're allowed to cancel it, right? Once we get them the same, yeah. So, I start with that. Now, Marcus, tell me something about this equation. What's missing somewhere? I mean, you mean when you I need a common denominator, right? Oh, yeah. So tell me what's missing somewhere. Okay, from the, from the far side right here, you're missing a 4. Okay. And then you're missing a 2x plus 5. 2. Oh, 5. Why not? Is they separate? You're missing that x5. You're just missing the x plus 5. Why? Here, let me explain. Everybody see this 2 here? Yes. This 2 could really be near 4. 2 times what gives me 4? So if I just put a 2 here and here, I actually have a 4 here, don't I? Yeah. And I have a 4 there, so we're good. That's the trick there. And I notice a lot of people forget this. So I'm trying to make sure we emphasize that. Now look at your denominator on the left. 
Look at this denominator, 4x plus 3x plus 5. This is really 4, 2 by 2 is really 4, x plus 5, so what's missing there? Where? In the middle term. Uh, x plus 3. Good. Okay, again. Now look at the middle term. It's the same as the first one. 4x3x5, 4x5x3. X five, X five, X same exact thing. On the far end, all I have is a 4. So would you have to put the 2? What do you mean the 2? Like the put the a 2 here? No, no, no. But in the middle. You put the, say, if I put a 2 times. No, but this is already a 4, so just have to put x plus 5 with x plus 3. Yes. No, I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you, you put the 2 times 2. Like, would you have to put that? I have it already. It's there. It's four. Question. You put the two to tell me. That's why you didn't want to put the I two. I put the two here because I saw that there was a four here. Mm -hmm. And if I have a four here, I need a four here. What will make this two a four if you multiply it by two? So I put a two in the bottom and the top. Okay? Hold on. If that equals two was three over eight. Then you would need an eight. This would have been a four over four here. Yes. Okay. Whatever you need to have there, you have to make happen. Yeah. All right, so again, as Enrique said, we're missing x plus 3, x plus 5 here. So the whole bottom answer is like that. Correct. But you just have to bring it down. Why do the bottoms all cancel? Well, remember, you see the equal sign. Equal sign, right? And if you divide everything by the same thing, it's like you're not dividing at all. Think about it logically. Cut everything in half. You still have the same stuff on both sides, really. So we cancel all those denominators. Now, from the last example, somebody tell me, should I multiply the 4 here, or what should I do, really? Before x first, right? Cancel. Multiply. Cancel. Multiply 4 times 4. Multiply what? And that is what? 6 times. So instead of having 4 times 4 here, make that a 16, please. And then you can just distribute the 16s. What does that mean? 16 times 4 is 80. 30 and 50 is 80, right? Did you have that way, Marcus? Good. Next one. Everybody see 2 times x? Just write 2x, please. Think of this as 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. Hold on, Amber. 2x times 3 is just 6x. Again, how am I doing this? I'm distributing. I'm distributing like that. Okay, I'm rewriting it to make it simpler. So what is it just add the other two? Well, that's the next one we have to figure out. Here, I would FOIL first and then distribute the 3 afterward. Okay, I would FOIL this first and then distribute the 3. It just makes it easier. So write this last side as 3 parentheses. Well, here, let me do this. Boil this out up here. What do we get? Okay. Again. No, you're right. You're right, Anthony, but you just combine I combine in my head. X squared plus a five X plus a three X plus a fifteen. The five and the three X become eight X. So now we need to distribute this three to the whole thing up here. Distributing that three, we're gonna get three X squared. 24 x and 40 x. Uh, no, 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 no. 45 x. Yeah. Or just 45 x. Right? There's no x there. Now, look at this problem. A lot of people get stuck here, actually. What do you have to do to solve this problem? Combine like terms for sure, but eventually, what do we need to do? Get everything to one side so we can factor or unfold. Okay? So combine like terms first. Left side, I've got, I'm going to write this as 2x squared. Uh, let me write a little higher, hold on. I'm going to write this as 2x squared. You can, but if it's the same, you, this whole thing would be over that, and this whole thing would be over that, wouldn't they? So 
then it would cancel again. It would still cancel either way. So that's what I'm saying. Just cancel this. Oh, so then it would make sense. No, no, it would make no sense. It would be extra work. It would make sense, but it's extra work. Oh, all right. Right? So here we get 2x squared. 16 and 6 is 22 plus 80 equals 3x squared plus 24x plus 45. Now, at, at this point in time, move everything over. I would move the stuff from the left over to the right so that you get 3x squared minus the 2x squared, which will give you a positive x squared. Again, move everything over by making all these, see all these, three of these? Make them all negative and move them over there. So subtract 2x squared, subtract 22x, and subtract 80 on this side. On the left side, you're going to end up with 0. That's what we want to get, because we're subtracting. We're moving them all over to this side by subtraction. What do I get here? Oh, plus 2x. Very good. Hold on. Again here, we have the x squared plus the 2x minus the 35. Now at this point in time, what can I do? Good. 75, right? What are the multiples of 35, or factors of 35? 5 and 6. 5 and 7. 5 and 7. And 5 and 7 gives me a 2 in the middle. Yeah. Okay, so x plus 7. And x minus 5. So my solutions are negative 7 and positive 5. Now, you have to check your answers to make sure they work. Okay, you have to check your answers. So once you get these two answers, plug them back into the original up top. Plug them back into the original up top and see if they work. They both will work in this case, just so you know. Okay, if you want to check them on your own. There's a lot more to do still, guys, in this packet. But the other stuff is pretty much... 43 onward, which is the vertical asymptotes, the horizontal asymptotes, the slants, the graph, and all that stuff. Make sure you study tonight. Make sure you go through this process. That's not a bad idea. I'm going to ask them. I can't just do it when I ask. If they want to do that, I'll be happy to. Then we can post two videos. Sure. Bias and microphone. Oh, today, guys? Guys, today I'm at high school, remember? I gotta go visit the science labs. Yeah, I'm at the Are you teaching me right now? The spirit? No. It's not in here, I thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm only on Wednesday, I'm not, so I